Welcome to the show. I volunteer at the Chilliwack Culture Center. Recently, I was volunteering in the art gallery, and today's guest had his, uh, his uh, paintings there titled Sandstorm. So I invited him on to the show, and here he is, ladies and gentlemen, Chris Woods. Thank you for having me, Nancy. Well, I'm so glad you agreed to be here. This is really great. And I want to apologize mm -hmm. for mixing dates and times all over the place with that. No, not at all. Let I mean... My schedule was open, let's put it that way. Okay. Well, everybody was really patient. Everybody here, they were really good to me about it, at least to my face. <laughs> but, I, but I heard this recently. If people are talking about you behind the back, it's none of your business. Boy, yeah. Anyway, so um, tell me a little bit about your background. Now, and I know from your bio that you were mm -hmm. born in Miramichi, New Brunswick, correct? Yes, I was born in Miramichi, New Brunswick. My dad was in the Canadian Air Force, RCAF. Um, so we moved a lot. I lived in Miramichi till I was three, and then we moved to Capscasing, Ontario, and from there we went to Edmonton, Alberta, uh, which plays into what we'll talk about in a minute, uh, my art show. Uh, and then when my dad retired, we moved to Chilliwack. Oh, he retired, so he didn't come here to be at the base? No, he was in recruiting near the last half of his military career, and he visited Chilliwack a lot and fell in love with it. So, oh, okay. Yeah. So what was it like for you as a kid moving like all of those different places? Did you have a trouble fitting in? Um, I mean, it's not great, but it's my sisters had it worse. They're 10 and, and 12 years older than I am, so they had to move in high school. So it was really tough for them. But I, by the time I was nine, we'd sort of set down roots, and, and that's when I started living in Chilliwack. So it was... I kind of got off easy, I think. All right, okay. Definitely. I'm always amazed with people with, um, with talent. When, oh. when did it first manifest itself? And when did you start drawing? Uh, you know, grade school, even yeah. before that, I'm sure. It was always, I was always the kid in the class that could draw, and so it just everybody was like, you're going to be an artist when you grow up, right? And so I was like, yeah, why, <laughs> why wouldn't I be? So, so, yeah, it's always just been something I was good at and something I wanted to do. No, I know you went to, um, is it here in Chilliwack, you took uh, art, uh, the art class or whatever it's called? Yeah, Chilliwack Senior Secondary had and still has a, a college level arts program. And I really, it's, I mean, I was always gonna be an artist, but that was where I, I had some, some teachers Mrs. Cooper and Mr. Kaufman and Mr. Granzo were, they were still young and hip, you know, they were just in their 30s. And, and I got a real, a real university education in the visual arts, certainly, and the fine arts from them. It, it, it sort of, uh, you know, it boomeranged my abilities out into the world. I, 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 would, I was just very lucky to meet the right people at the right time and have some really great support and they kind of helped me channel. And like the, those teachers said, don't go into something, don't go and learn some skills, go and be, go and be an artist and go for that because otherwise you'll be miserable. And the, that piece of advice alone was, has probably made my career definitely. So did you go, did you take more schooling as when it comes to the arts after high school? I did go to what was Fraser Valley College at the time. Um, well, laziness was part of it, but also uh, economic costs. I would have liked to have gone to Emily Carr, but I was a mm -hmm. little, I think I'm still a little bit of a scaredy cat, so that might have had something to do with it. The, the classes at the time were, going from high school to college was a bit, going back in time a little bit. The teachers at the college at the time were were very traditional, kind of European. Uh, they didn't f fly with the, uh, you know, their their knowledge, not knowledge, but their vision of what constituted art sort of ended about 1900. So it was uh, it was a bit of a going back in time a little bit. But it, if anything, it was good. It gave me something to rebel against. Oh right, you know. Yeah. So and yeah, it's unfortunate because I, I don't. I hopefully it's not so much like that now. But no, not at all. It's right. it's University of the Fraser Valley now has a really impressive you know it's an art school there's no just no way you can there's no other way to define it it's it's quite it's quite something so how does a person go to from being doing great art in school because a lot of people do sure but then going to have their work displayed in a gallery somewhere mm -hmm. 
Well, I, I mean, I had the good luck to have parents that supported me in my career. My mom and dad were, they were, my dad grumbled a bit, but other than that, they were like, go for it, you know. So they played a huge part. And, of course, my high school played a huge part. When I, when I diss my time at Fraser Valley College, it's not necessarily true because I, I had a teacher there who taught art history, Mr. Rory Wallace, who gave me um, an entry form to an exhibition at the time called Artropolis 90. It was an open submission call. They, it, was, it was a series of exhibitions in Vancouver that were artist-run. They sort of started as a salon de refuse to a big show that was at the Vancouver Art Gallery in the early 80s. So it kind of evolved into this really amazing event, artist-run event. So they, the show that was being planned for 1990 had 200 artists, and 150 of those artists were invited, but they had an open submission call for 50 slots. So my art history teacher gave me this submission, and so I sent in a package and was very fortunate to be chosen out of 500 applicants to be one of the 50. So Oh, very nice. Yeah, that was another big break for me, certainly. So, so how much of a boost is it to have your work displayed somewhere for your career? Well, it's a huge boost, obviously. Um, um, even though my ego sometimes won't admit it, you, if you, sh you know, it's like being a performer. Like, art is show business, really. So if okay. it's the more stage time you get, the better. You know, I started out showing in coffee shops and little teeny galleries, and, and that made a difference. You know, I sold work in those little, those smaller venues. And, um, and I, as I say, I was very lucky that I had the people to support me. You know, it was every artist has a team behind them. You know, it's okay. no artist can exist in a vacuum. So you've got your family, certainly, and your teachers. And then um, I was very lucky to, uh, after the Artropolis 90 show, which was held at the Roundhouse in Vancouver, uh, one of Vancouver's big commercial galleries at the time, Diane Ferris Gallery, saw my art at Artropolis and invited me to to in, to show sort of temporarily. And once I got my foot in the door, I never left. So they had they were stuck with me. So have you made a living? Uh, it's not been so great in the last decade, just because the two thousand eight um, crash had a quite a big toll on sales. But I also the work that I've done then since then has been a little less commercial. Um, it's it's a mixture of things, but uh, I'd say on par on, on mostly yes, I have made a living. But again, with through the the wonderful grace of my family and my my now my wife Angela, they're they're they put up with me. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so I'm an artist. I'm not, mm -hmm. but let's pretend I'm an artist. Okay. And I've done these creations, and I want it to be in an art gallery somewhere. Now, what do I do? Wow. Well, just start showing. Go wherever you can. As I say, show in a coffee shop. There's a lot of walls out in the world where people want to show your art. You know, there's lots of venues. You don't have to. You don't have to sort of wait for the biggest and the best. Start showing because then you get experience, and people see your work, and you start getting feedback. The, it's. I didn't grow up in the internet age, so there might be a little difference with that sort of stuff. Right. But also going, I, I wish I had finished my diploma. I never got my diploma from Fraser Valley College. I sort of regret that because I, I sort of left that academic setting. So certainly go to art school because then you start mixing with the right, you know, the right crowd, if you will. So, and just show whenever you can. Show at school, show in a coffee shop, just get your work create the body of work and just try to get it out in front of the public and 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 always you know never settle for what you've for what you have in hand you've got to keep improving your skills and mm -hmm. and and seeking uh, you know any artist knows that I don't need to tell them so um, just get your work up on the walls wherever it is because people see it and they respond to it it's our culture sees art as a luxury but it humans instinctively know that it's a necessity you know they mm -hmm. They, they're drawn to it. They love it. They have to have it, even if they don't realize it. You know, the right. money that you spend on art is as important for your mental health and, and f just for, your, for living a, a fulfilled life. You know, it's, it's important. It plays a big part. So if you put yourself on the stage, people will applaud and pay attention. Well, we're just going to stop there for a second, okay? You got it. We'll be right back. Stay tuned.
Well, we're back, and I'm talking to Chris Woods, artist. And mm -hmm. so you have, you currently have your artwork on display. That's correct. Right? Yes, I have a show called Sandstorm, which is showing at the O'Connor Group Art Gallery at the Chilliwack Cultural Center. Um, the Chilliwack Visual Artists Association had canceled their slate of exhibitions for 2020. And um, Michael Cade, who runs the Chilliwack Cultural Center, was hoping to get something in the gallery space. So he was kind enough to call me. Um, um, and so I thought, well, this is, this, is a good, this is a good test for me and to keep my ego in check because it would be a show that, you know, we're all at a time where we're not going out and seeing art shows. So, but I, have, I, hadn't, I don't think I've ever installed my own, an, a solo show of my own by myself. So I took it as a challenge, you know, it was like a military exercise to, right. to get my skills, keep, keep them sharp. Oh, so um, explain that, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt please. you. Explain the title. Sandstorm. Well, the show, as I, as I mentioned before, one of the places I lived as a kid was Edmonton, Alberta, and I lived on a military base. And when you're a kid and you're a military brat, you kind of live in a little bit of a bubble. You're, you know, you don't live in the city and you don't fraternize with people that are not the same kind of generation and the same kind of culture as yours. So when you're a kid on a military base and there's nowhere to go, one of the things you do is you go to the movie theater. And I just happened to be of the age, I was seven years old when the original Star Wars came out, and that was a huge influence on my life in general and as an artist. It, it, it got the spark into me that I realized I needed, you know, it, it fueled all this creative urges that I had. So it, the show that's on right now at the O'Connor Group Art Gallery is called Sandstorm, and it, it's a look at the original Star Wars trilogy through the eyes of Darth Vader. Right. Unfortunately, by the time this airs, it won't be there anymore. Well, that's okay. But they can still look it up, right? Absolutely, yes. So where, if they want to see your artwork, like where would they go? Um, you can look. My Instagram is uh, Chris Woods, Chris underscore Woods underscore Emperor, I believe. Um, and then you can follow me, Chris Woods Art, on Twitter. And I have a Facebook page. I think it's Facebook slash Chris Woods Artist. Um, I don't have a proper web page anymore. I was got tired of paying for that. And um, but I know that people just need to Google your name because that's what yes, I did. Yes, if you search Chris Wood Sandstorm, yeah. you'll find it. Um, it. The series was originally done in uh, 2012 and 2013. I had the opportunity to put an exhibition on a solo show at the Reach Gallery Museum in Abbotsford, BC, and I. I was gonna so show some older work, and I thought this was a great chance for me to kind of explore new territory. And being a perennial nerd, I thought, why don't I kind of go back to the creative wellspring, where it, something that sort of, and again, kind of shot me out into the world as a creative person. So I, I looked at Star Wars. So I started getting the DVDs and looking through all the material, and I was struck a lot by some of the deleted scenes. Um, one in particular, I have a painting called Dead Soldiers. This series is, is, I call it art with a capital A. Like this is, there's a lot of fan art involving Star Wars, but this is, you know, I'm trying to be serious with this. So I've kind of written a, an artist statement about, it's, it's basically the nature of evil. And Darth Vader is a good example of how evil isn't an endemic quality of human beings. It, it, it's created by trauma and suffering and, and you know, Darth Vader as a young man, Anakin Skywalker was his name. He was born as a slave, and he was abducted by a weird religious order mm -hmm. and told that his family ties were irrelevant, and, and that contributed greatly to his evolution into this monster. So right. this is a series of paintings that, that um, it's partially inspired by um, a painting by Eugene Delacroix, who was a 19th century French painter, and he painted a painting called Liberty Leading the People, and it's this, a very, it's propagandistic about, you know, the strength of people during the French Revolution, and there's a bunch of bodies at the bottom of it, and um, I watched a deleted scene from Return of the Jedi where the heroes are invading the, the Imperial bunker, and they sort of pew pew, they shoot all the soldiers and they all f awkwardly fall down and, right. you know, there's no sound effects or anything. It's quite comedic, but when you hit pause, it takes on this very, um, you know, very serious tone. It's very tragic and right. that 
that was the kernel of this show to to look at the perhaps Darth Vader in his darkest hours would have had nightmares and visions of of his death, you know, and mm. the victory of on the part of the good guys. And and so all of these paintings are kind of him seeing the heroes as as the bad guys. It's right. sort of flipping the script a little bit. Well, let's change the topic now. You betcha. Uh, I know that recently you got into tattooing. That's true. Yeah. I <laughs> Why? <laughs> well, I don't mean that in a No, bad way. no. Well, originally just to get a second revenue stream happening. Okay. It was actually a friend of mine, Connie Roberstadt, said to me at the opening of the Sandstorm show in 2013, you should really try tattooing. It's fun. And I was like, yeah, I should try tattooing. <laughs> I know how to draw and stuff. So my wife laughed at me a little bit, but then she was on board and... I've, I've only been doing it on and off, sort of, I'm still in the practice mode, so oh, my okay. friends are all dumb enough to let me use them <laughs> as pin cushions, so, but I've really, I'm really enjoying it. It's a, as a studio artist, you spend a lot of time by yourself, and this is right. a great way to practice your art and be around people, so it's right. really been very rewarding. Um, when I'm ready to get a tattoo, it's going to be a zipper <laughs> down the front, right, when I know I'm going to die, so I'll come to you and you can put in a zipper. Okay, it's a okay. deal. Um, now, any other hobbies while we're talking on... Uh, oh, i got a million of them. My, do you? Yeah, my, so you're really, your brain is all over, is it? Yeah, I'm a stay-at-home dad, so my son is 14 now. So we do a lot of... I, I've i engineered my life to remain a kid, you know, and oh, doing a lot yes. of stuff. Yeah, so That's I great. get to, you know, it's parenting. I have to look after my son. So we <laughs> play video games, and we draw, and we play Dungeons & Dragons, and... He's a, a tough life, yeah. Right? It, oh yeah, it's so yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm so exhausted from all of that, <laughs> eating snacks and watching movies and video games and helping him with his homework. But he's he's really helped me stay young. How um, nice that though that you can do that. I'm right? I'm very fortunate. And yeah. To he's a wonderful kid and and uh, yeah. The, is he showing our, any artistic uh, talents? He is very prodigious in all media right now his his passion is role-playing games specifically dungeons and dragons right. and he writes like crazy he the thing is he's doing homework and hard work but i i try not to tell him that because he's having so much fun you know I'm, we always tell his teachers that he he reads and he writes all the time that's really basically all he does and so he's i'm right now i would say his his big skill is writing but he'll he'll draw he draws like crazy he loves that too so he's Multi talented, yeah. like his dad. Yeah, yeah. He keeps me keeps me inspired as well. So he's 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 I'm glad to keep him around. <laughs> well I think we're almost out of time here, but it's been really great, so I appreciate it. Is there anything you want to add before we close off? Um, Did I forget anything? No, nothing other than thank you for having me. Oh it's thank you for pleasure, being Nancy. here. I appreciate it. Thank you for watching. Hope to see you again. In the meantime, peace out. It's been a pleasure. Who are you?